Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian and today we are being summoned to King Arthur's Court because we are doing White Knights. That's right, we are doing a knight themed tribal deck today. But before I actually break this deck down, if you want to pick this deck up in paper, go over to Flipside Gaming, use promo code Giant Monster Games to get 10% off your online purchase. And if you want to pick this deck up on MTGO, there is an affiliate link right to Card Hoarder in the description below this video. The deck is $3 online right now. Absolutely crazy. If you're looking to get into playing other decks, $3, this one can be yours. Okay, let's get into it talking about who are our Knights of the Round Table. Well, the first two are Knight Exemplar and Kinsbale Cavalier. So both of these guys are kind of acting like lords. Well, Knight Exemplar is a lord for knights, and it also gives our knights indestructible, which makes them really hard to deal with. She also has first strike, which is fantastic. And then Kinsbale Cavalier is giving all of our knights double strike. A lot of our knights already have first strike, but giving them double strike just means that we can close up the game that much faster, which is the objective of a deck like this where we're playing a tribal creatures deck that is aiming to overtake our opponent. The next three knights we have are a quarter paladin, knight of meadow grain, and knight of the holy nimbus. All three of these guys are just getting us a bunch of extra value because we need some general value mid-range knights to kind of help fill out the deck if you will. So a quarter paladin is nice because it has battle cry so if we attack with a bunch of creatures especially once they're all indestructible he's gonna give everything plus one plus one. Meadow grain is just high value two two for two with first strike and life Flink is fantastic, especially when we're playing an all-white deck. Double white is really easy to cast. And then Holy Nimbus is also just a high-value creature, but it is doing something very strange. It has flanking, which is an almost forgotten about ability. It is whenever a creature blocks Holy Nimbus, that creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, which is really weird. You don't really see this in anything anymore, so it's kind of fun. Additionally, if it dies, it just gets regenerated unless your opponent pays two mana. So it's a really good chump blocker because your opponent has to leave up mana in order to not let this thing just keep coming back again and again and again. So these are three high value knights we have. The next two knights are both level up knights. They are Cabera Vindicator and Student of Warfare. So both these guys, as you can see, have level up. So it's a good mana sink into the late game. If you have extra mana kicking around, you can just pay a little bit of mana and make these guys bigger. So Vindicator makes our creatures get plus one plus one or plus two plus two if we manage to get to level five, which probably won't happen very often, but every so often it will, and it will make the difference for you. Student of Warfare, on the other hand, has a simple level up ability where it just becomes first strike, and then it becomes double strike. He also becomes a 3-3 three, three, and then a 4-4, four, four, which is nice because with this kind of deck, we're playing a tempo deck. We want to be sinking as much mana into our stuff every single turn if possible, and this is just a good place for us to dump extra mana. If we have one white or two white kicking around at the end of our turn, bam bam, sink it into this guy, he'll eventually get bigger and bigger, and then becomes a double striker 4-4, four, four, which is fantastic. The last creature we actually have in the deck is an honorary knight because it's not actually a knight. It is Thraben Inspector because Thraben Inspector is really good. It's a 1-2 for 1 and it gets us an artifact which can draw us more cards. So it's just general all-around value. Might as well play her. We also need more 1-drops. So I played her as a 1-drop just to round out our mana curve. The next section we're talking about is called Battle Tactics. That's right, I want to get deep. I want to immerse ourselves in the knightification of the knight's deck. So Battle Tactics, what's actually in here? Well, well the first things we have is Always Watching and Honor the Pure. These are to boost morale of all of our knights and give them plus one, plus one. Honor the Pure is obviously the cheaper of the two, as in cheaper mana-wise, not necessarily cheaper cost-wise, but cheaper mana-wise. But Always Watching also gives our stuff Vigilance, which is actually really good in this deck because if we can swing with all of our knights, especially once they're indestructible, and then still have blockers, I don't know how our opponent gets around that. That is really difficult if you ask me. The next card we have is Brave the Elements, so we can actually give our creatures protection from a color if we want. If we don't have the knight that gives everyone indestructible, we can give them this, and then they don't have to die from certain colored creatures. It can also prevent us from having our creatures die to burn if our opponent plays red spells, such as Anger of the Gods. And the last two cards we have in the Battle Tactics section is ways of removing our opponent's stuff. We have Oblivion Ring and Celestial Flare. Oblivion Ring obviously can target anything that is not lands, so when it's going to get rid of stuff, we're going to help us deal with Tron and a bunch of other decks where we just need to kind of get rid of stuff. And then Celestial Flare is obviously, if something is going to be attacking or blocking, we can make our opponent sacrifice creatures. It's... I mean, I, there's an upgrade for this card. There's definitely an upgrade for this card, but in a budget deck, it works quite well, and you'll find that it works well enough <laughs> for the budget of the deck. Now the section that everyone's waiting for, land. Well, we have two Ghost Quarter and 20 planes. Nothing too special going on here. And that is the entire deck, but if you're planning on taking this out to an FNM or playing on MTGO, you're gonna want a sideboard, so let's talk about the sideboard. The first thing we have is more copies of Brave the Elephants and Riders of Gavany. 
Both of these cards are aiming to protect our creatures. One nice thing about Riders of Gavany is most all of our knights are humans, or almost all of our creatures are humans, with the exception, I think, of three of them. So we can actually use this to our benefit. If we're playing against elves, or playing against spirits, or other tribal decks, this guy's going to come in really, really handy. And then Bravey Elements, we've already talked about. Bravey Elements is protecting our stuff from things dying, usually. Specifically burn spells in most cases. The next two cards allow our deck to shift into a little bit more of a control deck, and that is Aven Mind Sensor and Spirit of the Labyrinth. Both of these cards are preventing our opponents if they're trying to do combo-based stuff or just trying to get general value stuff in a lot of blue decks. We're just going to slow them down. We're going to make it so they're not drawing extra cards each turn. We're going to make it so they're not searching their library for stuff each turn. It is going to be just it's just our way of slowing down our opponent so they don't kind of get out of control because we're not a fast deck. We are a mid-range tempo deck. I say mid-range and tempo like they're interchangeable. Realistically, we are a tempo deck. We are trying to play a 1-drop on 1 turn 1, play a 2-drop on turn 2, play a 3-drop on turn 3, play 2 2-drops two on turn 4, so on and so forth. This is what our objective is, and we can't let our opponent get extra value if we want to be doing this. So we become a little bit of a control deck and slow them down from doing stuff. And the last three cards in the sideboard are more Oblivion Rings, Tormod's Crypt, and Witchbane Orb. These are all dealing with specific decks, largely Burn, Dredge, and Storm, because those decks tend to give us a quite a hard time, so we just want to be able to fortify against any of them. Now, a budget deck isn't any good unless you have an upgrade section, so if you want to upgrade the deck, you can do that. So let's talk about some upgrades. The first thing is, because we're playing a tribal deck and we're playing Mono White, we should talk about some lands, specifically Cavernous Souls and Flagstones of Tokare. Both of these cards are adding really well because we are playing a mono white deck. Cavernous Souls, I mean unfortunately we don't have other color mana we need from Cavernous Souls, but preventing our stuff from being countered is really important and really good. So Cavernous Souls is fantastic in a tribal deck, any tribal deck. Cavernous Souls is really nice in. Flag Zones, on the other hand, is actually really good in a deck like this, where we don't actually need like seven mana or six mana most of the time. So what we can do instead is play Flag Stones. If we play a second Flag Stones, because it's a legendary card, we get to destroy one of them and fetch up a planes, which thins our library just a little bit. Additionally, if you're playing four Ghost Quarters, not just two, if you're upgrading in the deck, then you can also just crack one of your ghost quarters, blow up your flagstones, and then you get to go fetch up two lands, so you basically thin your deck out a little bit more, which is actually the idea behind flagstones and why it's run in a lot of decks, because it thins your deck out, giving you that, like, you know, 3 or 5% extra value every single time you crack it, because you're less likely to draw into land and more likely to draw into cards that actually matter. The next three cards are just direct upgrades for you guys. That is Path to Exile, Ley Lines of Sanctity, and Rest in Peace. All three of these cards are just general upgrades. Obviously, Ley Line of Sanctity and Rest in piece are upgrades for the sideboard section, but Path to Exile is definitely an upgrade for your direct removal spells because you really want to be doing that in this deck. You want to be, you want to have better removal. Path to Exile is premium removal if you can afford it, I would say get it. And just to be clear, Ley Lines of Sanctity replaces Witchblade Orb and Rest in Peace replaces Tormod's Crypt. They are just better versions of those two cards generally all around. So. Again, if you have the money, if you're playing this thing more competitively, go ahead and upgrade to those. Those are fantastic cards. And if you buy these cards, just something to keep in mind. You buy those cards, they're good in almost any single white deck. They're played all the time. So having them, once you have them, you have them. You can use them in any white deck you're playing from now on out. Carrying on, though, we have Hero of a Bladehold and Metallurgic Mimic. You could probably guess that Metallurgic Mimic would be in the upgrade section because, again, if you're playing a tribal deck, Metallurgic Mimic is just extra value. Come on, it puts a 1-1 one -one counter on any single creature you play of the chosen type. We're playing knights. Every single knight's going to come in with a plus one plus one counter. Fantastic. Why not do that? And then Hero of Bladehold just creates soldiers whenever it attacks. Plus it also has battle cry, so when it attacks, all other attacking creatures get plus one plus oh. So, as you can see, it's going to run in and do a ton of damage. So, again, both these cards are really good upgrades if you have the money. I would highly recommend both of them. Now, the last three cards we're going to talk about is going to take us in a little bit of a different direction. That is Ether's Worn Canonist, Rule of Law, and Aether Vial. Now, all three of these cards take this deck into to a more tempo based deck where you're kind of preventing anyone from doing a lot of stuff but because you are playing stuff on tempo you're aiming to play one spell one turn one spell the other turn one spell the other turn they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and then with aether vial you can actually sneak in extra creatures with it which is the really good thing behind a tempo based deck if you want to try this out here's some cards to play with i would say play around with it i've seen a couple decks that are doing this and it's really cool but again, I haven't tested it out myself, but I thought I'd mention to you guys, seeing how building a strong tempo-based Knights deck could be a way to go. And that, my friends, is the entire deck. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to Giant Monster Games if you like this video and want to see more videos just like it. Until next time, my name's Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.
Thanks for watching the video. I want to throw a giant shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. They are helping make videos just like this possible by supporting the channel directly. You guys are amazing. If you want to join them, there is a link on the screen and in the description below the video.